Welcome to the three block model of UDL video series. My name is Jennifer Cates, and I developed the three block model while I was teaching in classrooms for over 16 years in both Winnipeg and Vancouver. The model is really just a synthesis of 40 years of global research into what makes inclusive education work. Like you, I'm sure, I had very diverse learners in my classes, and at times it felt overwhelming trying to meet the needs. So because I'm single and I have no kids, I could choose to have no life. And I went back to school to do my PhD. I went back and forth from the PhD while teaching full time so that I could move from theory to practice. That allowed me to let go of the practices that weren't working and focus and be intentional about the ones that were. It allowed me to reduce the challenging behavior in my classroom, to reduce my prep time, to reduce all the marking that I was trying to do, and to instead really focus on my students' actualization of who they are. Our world is tolerant of diversity. Our world has a place for everyone. That child that we tell to keep their hands to themselves becomes a massage therapist that we pay later. The child who can't sit still is the firefighter who pulls us from the fire. Our schools are not designed for that diversity, but they should be. And there is a way to do that without putting ourselves on stress lead by October. Our profession has been on a journey over the last many decades. We began as exclusionary. If you couldn't do the program, you simply didn't come to school. We then moved into segregation. We realized that all children needed an education, but we educated them separately. We then proceeded to integration, where first students with disabilities were placed into special education classrooms within regular schools, and then gradually spent part of their day inside classrooms with their peers without disabilities. We then moved to what we thought was inclusion. We enrolled all of our students into general education classrooms and attempted to adapt and modify the curriculum to meet their needs. However, that, that paradigm of adapting and modifying led to a whole lot of students doing a separate task from the rest of the class at the back of the room with an EA. That's not to denigrate EAs. It's simply to say no child should be alone at the back of the room with an adult and never interact with their peers, or rarely so. So how do we move beyond that model to actually having all of our students be a part of the life of our classrooms and schools? When we begin to recognize that all students are diverse, every single one of us, we all have a bar graph of working memory and language processing and attention and personality and background experience and interests. Every single one of our students is diverse. And when we understand that, and we understand that we're going to have to design our schools, classrooms, our instruction, to celebrate that diversity, to recognize that biodiversity is necessary for sustainability, that this is a good thing. That's gonna require us, if we're truly going to become inclusive, to blur the boundaries of what we currently call the classroom and the school. That doesn't mean that we have to blow up the system, but it does mean that we have to rethink what these look like. How do we allow students to become who they are meant to be, not who we want them to be? How do we value the student who represents their thinking visually as much as the student who represents their thinking in writing? How do we help students to find meaning and purpose, to see who they are and what they have to offer the world? And how do we get our students out into the world so that they leave our system knowing 
what a historian does and what an architect does and what a physicist does, what a carpenter does. All of these things matter. They're all important to the life of our society. But our schools have a very narrow vision of what success is. We need to open those boundaries and begin to celebrate the gifts and talents and backgrounds and experiences of our students. When we understand that every one of our students is diverse, as is every one of our colleagues, and we design our classrooms and schools to honor the spirit, the body, the mind, the heart of all of our students, then we will have ensouled our schools. It is possible. And I hope this video series will bring you to that awareness of hope that it is possible. So what does it mean to include? What's our definition of inclusion? The best definition I've seen comes from Ferguson in 1995. They said, inclusion is a unified system of public education that incorporates all children as active, fully participating members of the school community that views diversity as the norm and that ensures a high quality education for every student by providing meaningful curriculum, effective teaching, and necessary supports for each student. That's the goal of this video series. In the three block model, we look at three groupings or aspects of that inclusive system. The first is about the social and emotional well-being, mental health, trauma-informed care. And in this series, you will find videos that help you to address trauma, to address challenging behaviors in your class, to create a culture in which students work together collaboratively, in which families and communities are involved and have a positive relationship with teachers. You will have some videos focused on the inclusive instructional practice, how we plan our units, how we deliver them, what management and implementation looks like, how we assess and evaluate, how we do our report cards. All of those things are in here, as well as how we write IEPs and how we support students with additional needs. You will also find videos focused on the systems and structures, the policy, the budgeting, the staffing, all of those aspects that we need to consider. And most importantly, how we work together as a profession, collegial coaching, mentoring, collaborative practice, to all move forward together, to bring everyone on board, include everyone in the journey, and work together to find the solutions that are right for our local context, for our students, and for you as an individual teacher. Briefly, just to show that there is research supporting this. If you look at effect sizes, they are the easiest statistic to understand. An effect size of 0.2 is a small effect size. A medium effect size is 0.5, and a large is 0.8. If you look at outcomes for research on the three block model, and this research is multiple studies involving thousands of students and hundreds of teachers across the country and internationally, you will see that almost all of the effect sizes are large to very large. The medium effect size for positive interactions for children who are culturally and linguistically diverse, we can understand when you're learning a new language, it will impact the number of interactions you have. The medium effect size for Indigenous students around inclusivity is what spurred us to write the book and Soling Our Schools and to add the programming that's within it. We wanted to address how we help Indigenous learners to feel welcome in the school setting, to feel that they belong, that they have something to offer. Our videos, both on Indigenous perspectives 
and woven through all of the videos in this series. You will see how we have decided to respond to that. We all know reading is a big deal in schools, so we wanted to take a look at what happens when we universally design our reading programs. For the general education population, the truth is, it helps, but it's a small effect size. The truth is good readers could learn to read in the traditional setting, they can learn to read in the UDL setting. They do slightly better, but not enough that it was just for them, you would bother to change your program. However, when we look at the struggling readers, the effect size is exceptionally large. So what does this mean? It means that our strong readers are not harmed by universally designing our reading program and our struggling readers, it is an absolute necessity for them. They actually achieve grade level outcomes, three out of four on the scale. They don't quite close the gap. You'll notice it's 3.24 for the general population, but they achieve grade level outcomes when we universally design our reading program. This is an absolute must if we are going to address the needs of students who struggle with reading. There is also research showing that teachers benefit from implementing the three block model, including finding it supportive of their philosophy, increasing their self-efficacy, improving assessment, reducing their workload, increasing job satisfaction, and even our students with the most significant disabilities show large effect sizes for outcomes within the three block model. This particular one is a study about interactions. It is about the social inclusion of our students, but they also benefit from the academic. Included with this video series is a list of the research studies. If you wish to access and read more about the research, you will find it in the package that comes with the video. So what do these videos seek to answer? They seek to answer the key questions of inclusive education in the 21st century. What does equity, diversity, and inclusion mean in schools and classrooms? What does the research say about outcomes of inclusion for students and teachers? How do I make inclusion work for all students without burning out teachers? What is universal design for learning and why should I use it? How do we create schools that make both teaching and learning more engaging, fulfilling, and joyous? What are the foundational best practices of a truly inclusive learning system? How does one create such a community? The big question in the end is this, can we shift away from looking at the negatives to celebrating the positives? This doesn't mean not seeing color or not seeing disability. It means seeing it and celebrating it. It means saying, what is the richness of that race, culture, faith, gender, child? What do they bring to our world? What do they offer? And what would we be missing if they weren't a part of our lives and world? This is a very indigenous perspective. The children are born with a gift. And we should be, as the adults in their lives, helping them to discover that gift and to develop it so that they contribute back to the community. That's what schools need to become, a place in which students develop their gifts. Finally, I want to end with this. I'll let you look at the five lessons in life from Dr. Seuss, but I want to emphasize number five. It says, Today I shall behave as if this is the day I will be remembered. We all remember the teachers who inspired us, who gave us confidence and made us believe in ourselves. We also remember the teachers who did the opposite. As a teacher, you have the power to wound and the power to heal awesome responsibility and the gift. Remember, 
you will be remembered. Keep that in mind as you interact every day with your kids.